echo what my wife just said. Um, I think it's really important that we understand that the the Bible doesn't um, ignore our emotions; it speaks to it. Um, when you read through Psalms, and David is having his moment, um, you always see David's lifestyle or um, testimony begins when he's able to change what he was saying. So he was going through something, and then he would say, but praise be to God. He remembers something that God has taken him through. So I think today, I really heard that word, remember. I think it was one of these guys. And when Susan was talking about, which just said now, it's almost as if like, sometimes our present suffering can almost erase the, the previous wins that are supposed to encourage us to push on. So there's a scripture in Job where it says, let the weak say, I am strong. So I've come to realize that my walk with God will, is not characterized by how perfect I am, but it's characterized by my confession. Meaning, even though I'm weak, I say, Lord, I am strong by faith. Are you guys following me? We walk by faith. So God is saying, how you walk with me is about how you talk. So I really want to encourage us this week. Whatever feeling you're feeling, acknowledge it. Then speak the word to it. You guys following me, yeah? It actually works, guys. The Bible says we understand the power of God because by the spoken word of God, the whole world was created. So essentially, Tosan, we're creating our future through our confession. That's why he says, speak the word. Read the word. Do the word. Amen? Yeah. So let's be encouraged. The Bible does not excuse or ignore our emotions. It speaks to it. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So, Father, today as we go into your word, I pray you help me. Be in my mouth and teach me the words to speak. Father, would you open the hearts of every individual today. Precious Holy Spirit, the author of transformation, would you sow a seed of transformation into our hearts today? And would you bring a light, a joy to our week as we apply this word in our lives? In Jesus' holy, precious, and anointed, the most glorious, the most excellent, the most beautiful, the most precious, the never ever failing word of God. His name is... I'll try that again. <laughs> His name is Jesus. And something beautiful happens when I call His name. Amen. As you can tell, I'm excited because the Word of God is sweet. I ain't said that for a while. But today, guys, we're on week, I don't know if it's five, I don't know if it's six, of close friends. Um, and today I'm going to talk about Do You Love Me? Um, and this is the context of, do you love me, i.e. me, one another? We're going to look at close friends today in the context of community. We're going to look at how intimacy with God should have a reflection of how we commune with one another. So, I've got a nice quote from my dear sister, Dorothy Day. She says, I really only love God as much as I love the person I love the least. I'm just going to say it again because that's how I read this. I read it like once a month. I really only love God, Tosan, as much as I say I do, as I love the person I love the least. I don't know about you, when I first read that, I just thought, wow, I don't love God as much as I think I do. <laughs> I said, wow, love for God is only evident for how I treat my brethren. The one that I don't like the least, the enemy, the one who offended me. The Bible talks about if you love those that love you, 
so what, basically? The heathens do that. He says, love your enemies. He even says that would be the hallmark of you being called a child of God. So I thought I'd open up that quote. That's kind of somber us a bit as we go through this session about community. Next life, me, man of God. So obviously, John 15, 12, 14 is our foundational scripture about close friends. Uh, and I've put here as my first point to bring to you today is that friendship with God is evident in loving one another. John 15, 12 to 14 in the ESV. This is my commandment. Commandment. Not advice, not counsel, not suggestion, not my thoughts, not even opinion. Commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. So point blank, he says, if you're my friend, you will love one another. Agree? If you, you are my friends, if you do what I command you. And this commandment is to love one another as God has loved us. And if we're all honest, this is not an easy task to do, is it, people of God? What I find beautiful in commandments from God in the new covenant context is that it's not something beyond my ability. Because the commandment was, love one another as I have loved you. Meaning, if the love I receive from God is authentic, Pastor Susan, it's going to be authentically expressed to you and I. If I'm truly intimate with God, close with God, it's going to be evident in how I treat you. I can judge your love for God for how you treat one another. I'm going to keep echoing that, guys. Amen? The word of God is sweet. You know why this has to be true? In the heart of God is people. When I get close to my wife, I I slowly begin to be interested in what she's interested in because I'm close and intimate with her. Things that weren't really my interest become my interest because I'm seeking to do what? To please her. So Paul made a powerful statement in 2 Corinthians 5 where he says, I regard no man according to the flesh. When he got saved, he saw people differently. All he saw was, are you a believer or not? Be reconciled unto God. He said, the love of God compels me to preach this gospel. It constrains me. It controls me. I can't taste and see the Lord is good and people are perishing. And I say, I love people. That's what he meant where I regard no one according to the flesh. And that was only by way of the spirit because of his encounter with God. And in my short walk as well, I've realized that sometimes the encounters I'm looking for in my bedroom are on the streets of London. Sometimes it's me speaking life to a stranger and seeing that response, seeing the love of God working through me, encountering them, that enables me to encounter God in a new way. Some of you guys are instructions of obedience, of encountering God in your normal day-to-day life by encountering people. So really, this kind of point, that's really echoes that. Do we actually really love people? Has this gospel 
has God, has intimacy really moved you beyond self? First John 3.16, it says in the Passion Translation, this is how, keyword, how, we have discovered love's reality. Jesus sacrificed his life for us. And because of this great love, we should be willing to lay down our lives for one another. If there's any scripture that checks me, guys, it's this one. Ask yourself, when last did you lay down your life for anybody? John says, we have discovered Loves reality. This is not a story. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a, you know, something, some, some kind of poetry. This is real life. Jesus died. And that death is evidence that he loves us. And that evidence is also an example on how we ought to love one another. I'm just reading the Bible, guys. Because of this great love, we should be willing, addressing our attitude. Willing. So it's not just saying I love people and doing an act. It's, it's the motive behind that act. People look at the outward appearance. God sees the heart. When last did you lay down your life for one another? Mm. Now, the motivation we need to do this, guys, I'm not just here to slap you with the word of God. Amen. <laughs> the, the room is somber. <laughs> is that this death is a visible reminder that God loves you. How can I know, Ayo, that God loves me for real? He died. And this can't be undone. It actually happened. It's final. It's done. It is the ultimate expression of God's thoughts concerning you. He died. So if his death cannot be undone, beloved, so neither can his love for you. And when we're talking about close friends and intimacy, we're trying to get you to this revelation here. Because if we're honest, Unbelief creeps in. Life is life in. How I feel doesn't really match up with what I just said. His love is undying. We hear this, I don't know how that makes you feel. But it humbles me to know that I cannot out sin myself out of the love of God. It humbles me that God knew my frailty and weakness, therefore every single morning new mercies. It humbles me because great is God's faithfulness to me. When I'm faithless, he remains faithful. Why? He can't deny who he is. What I do cannot change God. You guys following me today? I want truth to really war against those lies about 
the enemy is saying to you about how God thinks and feels about you. If he doesn't, if the God doesn't love you anymore, then he has to go back and undo the death. I want that statement of the cross to be so final in your life. When he said, it is finished, whatever you're going through today and tomorrow, declare, it is finished. This is why remembering, this is why communion is so important because he's trying to take us back to this moment and remember, I died for you. And this love will not stop. This body was broken for your wholeness. This blood was shed for your sins. I wash you daily, and daily I'm restoring you. That's God's thoughts towards you. My thoughts towards you are good. Love is not easily frustrated. It's not angered. Love is patient, and love is kind. The kindness of God leads us to repentance. The, the patience of the Lord is why he hasn't come back yet. He wants all of us to be saved. That's what love is. Patient. Love is patient when I've been doing the same thing for three years. Love is patient. Love is kind. I tripped again, but he still picks me up. So I want you guys. I've got, I've got homework for you guys. Uh, this, this is my desk. Next slide. On my desk, I have this cross. I'm preaching what I'm living, what I'm preaching. Amen. And I, this cross has got a scripture. I think it's Jeremiah 20 something and Psalms um, 29 11 to something. Uh, and it's on my desk because let's just be honest. I, want, I really want to echo this word called remember. Remember. If you read Deuteronomy, he keeps telling the fathers, remember when I took you out and teach your children. It, the reason why Israelites have festivals every year is because they remember what God did 3,000 years ago. And the power of remembrance in the Hebrew mind is that it takes you back into that moment and allows you to relive what God did again today. So Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1, 7, I want you to always keep in your mind Christ risen from the dead. He wants Timothy's mind to be set on the fact that your Savior has risen from the dead. Victory, Timothy, is always yours. A-N-T, victory is always yours. So I want you to get across. You've got to draw it. You've got to get a piece of paper. I want the first thing you see when you wake up in the morning, the cross. I want you to remember Jesus actually died. And that statement means he can never ever stop loving me. He is consistently working in me to will and to do what is pleasing in his sight. Remember. If you're struggling, if you're in a cycle, it's a besetting sin. It is finished. Remember. It's by faith, beloved. And it's by faith, it's got to come out of your mouth. I'm telling you, when I was, to the man all the time, when I, was, when I was saved and struggling with masturbation, it was by faith that I had to tell myself, I, I am free. The next day came, the temptation was roaring, but I had to remember what I said yesterday. Today, I am free. And before, I can't tell you the day that it went away. But it went away. By the grace of God, to this day, I am free. It is finished. I am free. It is finished. By faith. By faith. That's how you got saved. You believed in your heart and you did what? Confess in your mouth. Did God say, go and get a scrub and wash yourself clean? The moment you said, I receive you, Jesus, he made you the righteousness of God. In your eyes, altogether perfect and no flaw in you. And if you fall, the Bible says, the blood was shed for you. 
And God is not unjust, but he will cleanse you as you confess your sins. What a faithful dad. Remember, it is finished and I am free. So I'm echoing all of this because I'm trying to let this truth sink in you so that how we treat one another will change. Paul says in Galatians that if one of you is caught in sin, you who are spiritual, restore him with a gentle spirit. Once again, we're seeing the fruit of the spirit, gentleness, allowing the love of God to be expressed in that way and restore one another. But that can only happen if you have received gentleness. So God's never asked you to do things beyond your capability. He's only asking you to reflect what he shows to you. Amen? That's why we can't boast. That is why I can't boast. The grace that I have, I received. Can't boast. I stand here by the grace of God. There is blood all over my closet, fam. Yeah? All over it. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Next point. So because of this great love, this forgiveness, gentleness, patience, kindness, because of the cross, and that he has risen from the dead, this great love has to motivate you to lay down your life for one another. I put down here, laying down our lives for one another means dwelling in community. Why do I say that? Intimacy is communion with God. It always takes two to commune. Your intimacy with God is not just you. It's you and God. Therefore, if it takes two to commune with God, it takes two or three of us to have community. You guys following me here? So laying down a lot for one another is, is the foundation of what God calls the church. I want to have a group of people who Jesus said they will know you by your love for one another. To practice Laying down your life for one another. The early church was so radical with this. These men were selling everything they had and giving it to people that were in need. The Bible says they had all things in common. So, so true community is not a gathering of people. It's a gathering of people who love one another. A and T is only A and T if there's love for one another. This is what friendship with God looks like in the natural. I can judge your relationship with God of how you treat one another. Hmm. And this is the same way God builds his church. In Ephesians 4, 15 to 16, he says, instead, speaking the truth in love. Do you realize that I can come up here and speak the truth in spite? What I'm saying is real, you know, it's true. But it's void of love. Why is that important? Because speaking the truth in love means that we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head. That is Christ. From him, the whole body joined, held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. 
So the measurement of the growth of this house is not numbers. It's to speak in the truth in love, growing and building ourselves up in love as each one does its part. So even each one does its part, which is service, it has to come from an overflow of love. Are you guys following me today? Ephesians 3, 17, 19 says, this is, this is Paul's prayer. So Paul has heard of this church called Ephesians. Ephesians sorry. And what he says to them is that, I have heard of your faith in God and your loving people. The reputation of the church was so widespread because they were rather good in faith for God, but it was evident in their love for one another. And this was his prayer for them. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And that you being rooted and grounded in love, Paul says, I want your foundation. I want the beginning of your journey. I want what roots and grounds you, what motivates you, your ambition, your purpose, your destiny to be rooted in this thing called love. That you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, my goodness, height, and even the depth. To know the love of Christ which surpasses Knowledge that you may be filled to all the fullness of God. He says the path to fullness in God is love. It's not even how much you know this word, Tosan. It's how much have you been radically (laughs) transformed by this encounter with God which enables you to know his love that brings you into his fullness. This love, it surpasses knowledge. Knowledge is good, by the way. But but it surpasses this. This this word know speaks of intimacy, speaks of of oneness, speaks of coming into an understanding that bypasses being told but has to be experienced. You guys following me here? So, so this is what should drive us to pray and be in communion with God. I want to know the love of Christ. I, I want to comprehend the width. Paul is trying his hardest to measure. It's, it's, it's immeasurable. Because if you can measure love, you can measure God. God is love. So we already know we're set up for eternity in knowing this love. And this is how God wants to build his church, his people. Love. Do you love one another? I'm saying this because what God is asking us to do, he's doing it too. This is why our God, and I said Emmanuel said last year, like, he's a servant king, guys. Really weird. There's no servant kings in this world. There's no king in this planet that serves like our God, washing our feet. You have to deep it. When Peter's like, no, nah, Lord, I'll wash your feet. Peter's, Peter's being, his mind is being confused. At how can his savior be washing his feet? God washing my feet, Tosa. Hmm. So what I've realized in church is that whatever church is like it's just based on how we feel and how we treat God. We come to get and we don't come to give. What I mean, we have a prayer list but we don't have time to know him. It becomes transactional. A prayer list is good by the way but it can't just be prayer list. God says, I want you to know me. Imagine, every time I came to Susan, I just had a list. I need you to do this, that, and this. And she's thinking, I married you to know you. So if we practice this, 
Imagine if we all came to church to give. Guess what? All needs will be met. Are you guys following me? If your mindset was to give, which is essentially what his worship is, all of you who have needs will be met because each of us are giving to one another. Are you guys following me here? To love is to give. To love is to give. To love is to give. Laying down your life for one another. And to give, you have to be in community. You can't give to yourself, beloved. So, so that's why we come to church, if I can put it like that, at its base level. Because essentially what we're doing here, we can do at home. Hello? What makes church church is community. What makes church church is love one another. What makes church church is the opportunity to offer myself to serve somebody else. Because I want to do that because God did that for me. My final point, because my time is fast spent, so I might do the rest of it next week. Love cannot be felt or demonstrated outside of community. Love cannot be felt or demonstrated outside of community. It, and this is why I say, if God is love, he has to be triune. And triune means trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So God can be loved because there's three people in commune together. So there's three people in commune together. How does it look like for us as humans? We have to be in community one another, Tessa. I can't demonstrate love I'm not around people. It's not going to happen. I can't feel it if I'm not around people. Next slide. Don't worry, next one. Time's gone. So I put down here, you cannot self-love yourself into security. You were made for community. It is not good for man to be alone. I'm going to say it again. I hope I stepped step on some toes today. You cannot self-love yourself into security. You were made for community. I would even say for everyone that you will not even be able to know yourself outside of community. There's something happens in fellowship that awakens something inside of you guys. It's the same thing that happens when you're in fellowship with God. You weren't called to love all by yourself. God says, love yourself as I have loved you. And also love one another as I have loved you. Actually, no, sorry. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength. And love one another as I have loved you. True self-love will always be expressed in community. I'm making this really strong because I don't want you to use your personality traits as an excuse to not obey this word. I'm sorry, introvert, it doesn't work here. It doesn't work. Even if you have social anxiety, partner with the Holy Spirit to work out I'm suffering this area, but you commanded me to love one another. Can you help me? You were not made to be alone. And it's very key we hone in on this point because the root of idolatry is self. And every time we choose what we feel above what God has said, 
we walk in idolatry. Because we're worshipping our opinion, our thoughts, our traits above the word of God. We're creating an own image of ourselves, but we were created in the image of who? God. So I want to encourage you. When we love one another, that's even God's opportunity to demonstrate love for you and I to somebody else. And let us be honest, don't you feel good when you serve someone? Doesn't their joy light up your world? Doesn't that moment of seeing their tears of something that was so simple for you but so deep for them move you? So examine ourselves this week. Are we hustling ourselves for what I need to get? Or are we loving God to the point that we're meeting people's needs? Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these other things we worry and hustle about shall be added. Let's rise to our feet. Today we're asking God for a holy conviction. We're asking the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, if anyone sees a fellow believer in need and has the means to help him yet shows no pity and closes his heart against him, how is it even possible that God loves lives in them? Beloved children, a and T, our love can't be an abstract theory we only talk about, but it must be a way of life demonstrated through our loving deeds. And today we're asking the Holy Spirit, motivate me. Why the Holy Spirit help me to think beyond myself? Why the Holy Spirit shed upon my heart the love of God that causes me to see people differently? I really believe if we're going to see any type of promises of God concerning this house, it's going to happen through this response to loving one another. Loving your enemies, loving strangers, just loving people. Just being motivated to do some good works that will change somebody's life. The most spiritual thing you can do, people, is not prophesy or heal the sick and raise the It's to love people. If it's spiritual, it's very practical. So today we're asking the Holy Spirit. Let's be honest. Of ourselves, there's no desire for these things. But we need God. We need God. We need the Holy Spirit to pull upon my heart. We need the Holy Spirit to teach us just to maybe in St. Breeze just, 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 just wait a few more minutes and just bless somebody. I don't know, but whatever opportunity we have to, to slow down and look around and see how can I be Jesus' hands and feet today to somebody else. Oh God, we repent for exalting self above kingdom today. Uh, and today, I'm asking you to help me to seek the kingdom, uh, to find needs to meet, uh, to preach this gospel with boldness and authority, uh, to, to allow the love of God to motivate me to use my gifts, not for glory, not for my self-gain, but that people might know you. Oh, God, would you awaken this house, oh, God, to a lifestyle of laying down our lives for one another. Lord, let us start at home. Even this week, motivate us to find somebody in a and to bless, to, to sow into, to, to ask them what do you need and to meet the need, oh God. Lord, I'm asking today, maybe not live it from Sunday to Sunday, maybe have desires to meet up in the week, to fellowship, to commune, to actually bond together. To serve one another. Oh, I feel it strong, beloved. Don't make this a Sunday thing. Oh, I'm man said to don't make this a surface thing on a Sunday. There are relationships in this house that will shift your life, beloved. Hey, Kalabasaya. Oh, man. The purpose you're looking for, the, the destiny help you look is right in front of you. Oh, yeah, but say, Father, but Sakaya. 
Lord, help us to be clothed with humility this morning. Help us to be clothed with tender-heartedness. Help us to be clothed with compassion. Help us to be clothed this morning with your character, oh God. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. We pray in the area of forgiveness right now. We pray into offense right now. We pray into betrayal. We pray when we try to do this and we got hurt, Lord. We're asking for the healing balm of Gilead to flow in this room right now. Lord, we're praying where we've still got remnants of church hurt in our mindsets, sir, that you will deliver us this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Help us to lay this at the altar. For some of us, these things have become idols because they're not allowing us to yield to the word of the Lord. And the Lord asking you today, would you lay out the feet? Lay it down. Lay it down. I'm a healer. Lay it down. Oh, Sakaya Baba. I am a healer. Lay it down. Oh God. Oh God. We exchange burdens today and we receive the rest that comes from commune with you. So even this week, God, I release grace to pray. Lord, we release grace to lift up your hands. We release, we receive the grace to pray. We receive the grace to pray. Lord, I pray and I breathe and I prophesy over prayer lives in this room today. Receive life in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, reform their minds on what it means to pray at all times. Reform their minds on what it means to pray without season. Reform their mind on what it means to be intimate with you. Lord, deliver us. From religious, from religious antics, oh God. Uh, and let us pray in authenticity. Uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give every single partner of a &T daily bread. Daily bread. Daily bread. Holy Spirit become their best friend. Order their steps. 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 Order their steps, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Some of you need to start praying in the spirit before you start working. Some of you need to find a scripture this week and pray over your career. It's time to get practical with the word of God. The daily bread has to be prayed into, beloved. Find a scripture and pray over your days, over your computer, over your colleagues. It's time to take back authority over your life and order your life by the word of God. And that only happens in prayer. Ah, Elian, don't seek Manta. That only happens in prayer. So, Father, we pray. We don't know how we ought to pray, but the Holy Spirit intercedes for us in our weaknesses, and it makes intercessions according to the will of God. So even in our frailty, even we don't have words to say in prayer. Precious Holy Spirit, thank you for your intercession that is according to the will of God. We have security in you. Oh, there is security in walking with God, beloved. Your future days are in his hands. God, we remember the God that we serve and love creator of life in jesus name amen amen let's give god